So this video is all going to be about hypnotism, manipulation, and manufactured consent, or manufacturing consent, as Noam Chomsky called it in his book many, many years ago, because these processes of manipulation are of highest, or any of these pro processes of manipulation, as they are worked through in the mass media, are of highest relevance. So it is of vital importance that people come to understand how psychological manipulation is carried out in the mass public and why understanding such methods or such said methods and how they are performed should allow people to see them more clearly see more clearly through them and allow the reintegration of something like a natural intuition and suspicion and critique that is so necessary to have against these forces of power and control uh, so that we do not allow ourselves to be controlled by authority figures in society that we presume have our best interest at heart, but really they don't. Uh, so something I want to talk about is the kind of secret form of hypnosis, something that isn't told in an overt way, and this is why it's called something along the lines of covert hypnosis, and apply its basic four-step method to how televised propaganda and societal manipulation functions. The methods by which this works is by one, covert hypnosis, this is how it works in four steps, is one, attention absorption, two, mental critical bypass, three, emotional response, of course, or unconscious response, and four, the desired outcome through the process of the contingent suggestions. And what I want to do in this video is first go through each step in further detail and try to try to paint out a possible picture of how this works through things like propaganda and the emotional abuse that comes about through it. Now something like the method of covert hypnosis can be and is probably very easy to achieve in many different ways through any factor that demands and wishes your attention to absorb your attention through a method that absorbs people's eyes and attention. Uh, so thus, a television, for example, is a perfect device for attaining and absorbing attention as it acts like a window into another universe, if you will. Uh, how, it only, how its only purpose is to feed you information, that is what it's made for. Now, for something to absorb your attention, the cause has to affect you within your body, within your biological system. Uh, so much so that it affects you in a way that appeals to your instincts emotions or drives. The, the only way to truly get your attention in the most alarmist fashion possible is by shocking your emotions, instincts, and possibly anything that even associates to those instincts. Anything that associates to those emotions such as your social life, the culture you live in, the, the desired outcomes which you want to see for your personal well-being and your personal development and for your family and for your friends and for the external culture that you live in, anything that is involved in the regulations of your instincts and emotions fundamentally. So what happens fundamentally when the attention of an individual is absorbed? Uh, think of it like a back, uh, black hole. I like to give this analogy sometimes with reference to different things. So the complete psyche in a way is absorbed into this new dimension, you could call it, of reality or situation whereby it is not possible for them really to step out of it and go back to what was, uh, go back to, uh, to what was, but that they are completely immersed into this new reality. They've gone through the singularity of the black hole and come out the other end. They've, you know, so this is what it, what the situation is when you're immersed into this new reality, this situation or event that is being told to them through this attention grabbing source of, of, uh, attention, like a TV or any type of mass media communication, or phone, or anything of that kind. They are not interested in anything else. Now, when somebody is completely absorbed, what, what is it that they cannot achieve or cannot mentally do when in this state of motion? They cannot be critical. They cannot stop out of their own... They cannot step out of their own frame of mind and be self-reflective of how they are acting and perceiving the world. This can be... in Juiced into the individual by many methods, such as the use of maybe a, an authoritative figure who, through their own presence, unconsciously demands uh, the individual that they don't need to be critical, 
or contemplated because they can trust the person in this suit and tie, this police uniform, this doctor's outfit, or anything of that kind, which shows uh, a degree of social or relational social credit or or of professionalism within the relative culture that they are in. But I also think that this can happen biologically, that the emotions and instincts themselves within the individual that are being provoked within put the uh, puts the individual into a complete state of chaos and disorder, whereby the ability to be orderly through the process of something like comprehension is thrown out of the window. So this would be the point in which you have, in this covert hypnosis, step-by-step -step kind of rough way, about, way in which it goes about, uh, is the point in which you have bypassed the critical factor and have it activated maybe the unconscious chaotic emotional response, right? When that stage has been achieved, the hypnotist, if you will, if you want to call the, the, the thing in which demands control uh, this type of individual, the hypnotist is now in the relative position of power to lead or direct this unconscious or emotional force towards a desired outcome that they want to achieve on you. And this eventual outcome may just completely depend, really, on what human nature ultimately desires. I would say most people, or just as the way in which human nature is constructed, that people desire comfort, pleasure, or more so something along the lines of stability. Therefore, when the individual is in a state of emotional chaos, they would desire to be, they would desire by nature to be in a place of comfort or get into a place that leads into comfort and some, st some sort of cultural, new cultural stability that is being desired upon them, and not one of fear and unknowing. But what can happen is that if the individual is in this continuous perpetual motion of hypnosis, through manipulation whereby they never get back to the critical condition of self-reflection, to maybe get themselves out of this, this, this hypnotic trance, then their emotions could probably be continuously manipulated by more and more stimuli that grabs their attention and produces more and more emotional outbreak. And because of that, they can continuously offer ways out through coercion to maybe regain that level of comfort and equilibrium that the individual wants to get back to that the mind and body ultimately desires. Uh, so this process you could call maybe something that, that, that if it's continuated in a narcissistic abusive relationship or something that is codependent, you can maybe call it the process of jumping through the hoops, you know, the, but, but then them continuously moving the finishing line further and further away every time uh, when you jump through another hoop again and again, whereby you get to the point of jumping through so many of these hoops that they take away your integrity and the finish line becomes in some sense meaningless because you have allowed yourself to be kind of abused in this emotional way so much and trapped inside this eternal prison of lies and deception. But this, inter this entire scenario really of hypnosis itself is emotional abuse, it's narcissistic abuse and it's psychopathic to the, the individual that or the, through the, the organization or the or whatever it is that is, is perpetuating this onto its people. And it is something that happens in the media through propaganda in many different ways. And that has been something I think personally that has been at the core at, uh, of the entire, uh, what can I say? <laughs> what can I say that won't get me? Uh, uh, virus um, propaganda machine, right? At the end of the day, I don't, I don't care what you're, at the end of the day, I don't really care what your personal opinion is on this subject specifically, about whether it's this or that, or these different dilemmas that come up and, you know, disorientate these, these uh, specific perspectives or whatever. At the end of the day, I don't care about that. What I fundamentally know is true is that the entire program is governed internationally by some of the best psychological and hypnotic methods of manipulation that demand you out of pure fear to do what they want you to do. The same way in how a hypnotist wants to guide your unconscious or wants to, to uh, guide your emotions towards a desired outcome that they wish to see and one way they would probably actually try and do this and try and achieve that is through something called contingent suggestions, 
which I'm going to get into now. Now, once in that state of complete influence, whereby your emotions are in this chaos, this this continuous, un, ungrounded, untethered flux, you could say, which in of itself removes the ability to comprehend or be self-reflective, the propaganda can then be put in place to start directing your actions, your thoughts, your opinions and beliefs through something like contingent suggestion. Now, contingent suggestion, in from what I've figured out from what it is, is, is connecting a suggestion, which is something you are being recommended to do, because that's what a suggestion is, to an inevitable behaviour that is unavoidable, something that you're going to do on a daily basis, something that, you're, something that is, is going to happen from whatever actions you're going to make. Right? So this is what an inevitable behaviour is. It's contingent suggestions. So when the individual is made emotional, fearful and afraid, they can then be given suggestions that are attached to inevitable behaviours to overcome that specific fear momentarily. But if the person does not follow the contingent suggestions all the time, then they will fall back into fear when they don't do it, which brings the psyche to this kind of deadlock uh, of consistent abuse, whereby you feel as if you always have to do what you were told through fear by propaganda. Thus, what we can realise by this point is that the contingent suggestions themselves that are uh, put in place for you to follow are designed so that you always follow the rules. They are not designed to go away, that you never escape them or that they never go away because if you do, you will fall back into that state of fear in which they have manufactured for you through the propaganda that you have accepted and believe is true. And if there is a noticeable lack of fear, maybe, in the collective social ether, or that it is decreasing over time to, uh, to regulate, or, or that it's decreasing over, to, uh, over time, and they want to regulate the controlled behaviour that they desire to see, then they may add more for you, for your absorbed attention, whereby they would go back to the first step of covert hypnosis, maybe, uh, all over again, and then redo the whole process. Uh, so in that sense, it might be placing like little pockets of fright and disorientation that pop up in all these little places to regulate this system of control that they desire. So it is not a simple coincidence that the hypnotic contingent suggestions and mantras that people have been per uh, perpetually conditioned into over the past year are, are over and over again related to inevitable behaviours that are unavoidable. So if it was a pandemonium, let's say, you would not need propaganda to tell you that it is supposedly real because reality will always play itself forth without the need of any hiding, you know? If there was this biological frenzy, you would not need to develop a societal uh, structure of control that is based on a psychological system of manipulation to control what the people should do and think. Because reality would naturally tell us and inform us to what is true and real, and we would follow accordingly to those empirical laws of nature that inform us with what is true, right? Instead of trying to calm the public, as you should do, as any governmental system should do, they instead shock you and the public into fear by making completely unscientific simulatory predictions, using linguistical language that is to command your emotional behaviours and emotional responses in a particular way of fright and towards fright, and, and making all these predictions about the future that never even reached such heights to begin with. So this is the kind of situation that many people have been forced into or have been perpetuated into through these systems of control. So probably let's get some let's get into some examples. Probably one of the most brainwashed countries or publics from this method of recycled propaganda I personally think uh, is of hypnosis is maybe Australia, Israel. An example of this was with what was recently brought up and called a no regrets policy in Australia uh, by their government due to one single death from an 80 year old man or 81 year old man, something like this. And because of that, they ended up enforcing 900,000 Australian residents in Liverpool, Fairfield and Canterbury 
Bankstown under virtual house arrest, whereby they cannot even leave for work. So there's complete absolute insanity fundamentally. Then everybody being interviewed, of course, on this news thing I was watching, are saying, yes, this is absolutely necessary, with one woman saying that, and then then her completely breaking down into tears because of the continuous emotional abuse that all these governments are giving to their people so that they can fundamentally, what they're doing, breaking and destroying their individual uh, integrity and soul, fundamentally, as much as possible, over and over again, because they've recycled this propaganda over and over again so many times, and it's actually worked. They can increasingly minimise, because they've been able to do this, they can increasingly minimise and isolate the justifications for control and power. More and more, because they have metaphorically boiled the frog, as many people say. So much so that it becomes a normative response for so many people to just accept these regulations by law as justified, as righteous, as a commendable action by the government. Uh, that is good for everyone, all this type of thing. But the cracks in this entire system are actually falling apart as well because Boris Johnson, or what you could call him, Bobo Boris, whatever the hell his name is, right? This fool, this fool of a man, claimed recently that negative tests are now not good enough. They're now not good enough. So if you want to go to the nightclubs after something like September or the date of September in 2021, you have to get double jabbed to get into the nightclubs. And now, obviously, this is him basically saying without saying that um, mandatory vaccinations might be necessary. This is what he's basically saying, because he's saying, well, then if the negative tests aren't relevant anymore, they're suddenly not relevant anymore. They're not they're not efficient enough. Right now. Oh, OK. We, we now have to put this other system in place down the line. Something probably like that might happen. And if that does happen or if that simple regulation or law that he's proposing for September is to actually happen, then any form of liberalism that the United Kingdom have always supposedly been known for it will very quickly vanish, okay, so that's like the last straw, basically. But no shit, of course these negative tests never worked, you know, they were never good enough to begin with due to so many false positives with them, but you can see how they are now trying to psychologically in some way invert the insufficiencies of their own poorly built system that relies on the gullible to still try and aid to their own agenda. Now what other outlandish things <laughs> have been going on? Um, an Australian government, another thing in Australia was an Australian government representative came out recently basically saying that uh, that people should fundamentally be giving up on human nature and not involve themselves into any kind of communication at all with anyone uh, for basically no reason whatsoever. Uh, and the Daily Mail just made a recent statement saying, I think this, this was a couple of days ago now, quote, journalists could face up to 14 years in prison for stories embarrassing the government under proposed changes to the Official Secrets Act that would treat them like foreign spies, end quote. So something along the lines of full-blown fascism is the new trend for all governments, and something even, even I think recently happened earlier today was in Israel, some government representatives said something kind of completely discriminating against people who haven't taken the vaccine. So yeah, full-blown fascism is the new trend. Uh, for all the governments around the world, and people seem to like to take this up the arse very efficiently. Now, to kind of basically prove my first principle with the function of, and to get away from all this, to prove my function of the, of the first principle of covert hypnosis, and using its method of attention absorption through something like propaganda, is by simply giving you a quote by the man himself, Edward Bernays, who is basically one of the greatest propaganda kings of America, whoever, ex no, he's not from America, but a lot of his work was influenced into, into the streams of American culture. And he's one of the, you know, the greatest propaganda kings who ever existed, basically. A man who reformed psychoanalysis for the sake of capitalism and money and propaganda. So something he writes is the following, and this is very short. PR must create news 
in order to appeal to the instincts and fundamental emotions of the public, end quote. So that's all he says. That's all that needs to be said. The fact that it has to appeal to the instincts, as he says, and emotions is the fundamental necessity of how covert hypnosis functions. You have to shock their system at first into giving up their complete attention to the news and to therefore bypass the critical self-reflective factor of the sovereign individual so that you can lead their emotions towards a desired outcome that you wish. This is how it works, basically. You have to penetrate their emotional system. And that's what he's basically just said there, has to appeal to the instincts and emotions. So that simple short sentence from Benet's demonstrates the desire embedded in, in, uh, in news and propaganda to use your emotions for the sake of some kind of emotional hypnotic trance without you realizing it. And this is, this is the immunity that you need to develop. This is the immunity that all people need to develop against, not constantly going on about other things to have immunity, you need to develop propagandic immunity. And this, in some sense, is an unconscious process, this process of covert hypnosis. It's not really realised until someone realises it themselves through some sort of process of maybe being or coming in, into contact with something that is revealing in a calm way, when they're in a calm state of affairs. So they have to activate the instincts and activate the emotions so that they can develop this power over you. Which leads me into wanting to talk about now Noam Chomsky's work on the topic of manufacturing consent. Because what Chomsky in his heyday proposed, back many, many years ago now, was something called the propaganda model uh, on consent. That basically impartial mass media does not exist and never has. And we're going to be going over this model now. One thing he identifies in this model is that the American mass media has a social control mechanism built into it. Uh, he says it used to be anti-communism, it then became the war on terror, and now I would personally claim it to be slowly, maybe possibly in the future, to be slowly transforming into something else like the war on maybe medical terror, maybe, as an addition to what is. And I'm saying this because I was recently told by someone that they in America they reenacted Patriot Act in America. I'm not big into American politics. I don't really know much about it. But from what I know of the Patriot Act, I can say this, which probably means that they are going to maybe put in, uh, put, put it on a protective steroid, that they're going to be very invading, or they're going to make the Patriot Act very invading for the people in some sense, which is why I'm saying that they may include a new me uh, thing like medical terror or which maybe gives an excuse of doing something maybe like mass quarantines for people in rural areas, which is an actual course that you can actually, that they're actually training volunteers into, which is very frightening and is something <laughs> that you can look into. It's called the MGT 433 course on ruraltraining.org if you want to look, in, uh, look into that. But Chomsky also refers to other things like the profit orientation an advertiser orientation in mass media, which indicates that the mass media always functions as a profit-based operation and how, they also, uh, and how they also probably always work behind the advertisers' political biases, because if they didn't, they probably would not get the funding or the advertiser revenue that they need to be functioning as a news outlet. Another important point to make is also how, the, how he points out that large uh, bureaucracies uh, subsidized mass media for the sake of efficient sourcing, which means they have a lot of one-sided control over what type of information is used uh, and what type of information is sourced for what news is made for the mass public to hear through the mass media. But because of things like independent journalism and alternative media that, that does independent sourcing, uh, and research, you sometimes get these organisations, and I think this is the reason why these organisations started popping up and getting really popular, maybe, uh, out of nowhere, and they're usually referred to as and called as fact-checkers, or fact-checker organisations. And this has been kind of a recent epiphenomenon on the internet and online, whereby a lot, if not most of them, are actually funded by these other big, powerful 
funding organisations that maybe want to eliminate the truth that has ended up seeping through the cracks via alternative media or from more independent, reliable sources of research that are not given the needed attention by the mass media, but also, of course, to occasionally, now and again, eliminate the completely outlandish misinformation that runs around in the media anyways. So I want to end this off with a quick sponsor of the channel, which is that of Ground News. Ground News is one of the first news comparison sites that desires to uh, and to give its audience a balanced report of what is true by comparing the political leanings of different articles about subjects and news reports that matter to you and to the public. Many people have grown sick in the knowing and understanding that news is not really news at all, it's more of just a social construct to really engineer the way in people think and that is more a case of which media platform could manufacture the most amount of consent by confirming and engaging the public specifically to only want political bias than to know the actual truth of what is said in the public eye. Impartialities struggled to ever truly exist in mass media and Ground News tries to do exactly that by grounding their readers by comparing the leanings of politically inspired news articles from all over the states of, uh, of America and Europe. So if you're interested in that, you can check them out in the link below. I'll put a description to their website down below. But if you enjoyed this video, um, make sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts down below. What do you think about this whole idea of covert hypnosis, contingent suggestions, raising up the emotions into a form of chaotic uncontrol so that maybe forces of authoritarian governing direction can forward them into a particular narrative for social engineering and control these, these things are all very interesting and i think they're all extremely relevant so please do tell me what you think in the comments below um, if you enjoyed this video make sure to uh, subscribe put that notif uh, notification bell on for the channel and if you're interested in do donating or getting exclusive videos go to my patreon there'll be a link in the description for that as well um, so thanks for watching and I'll speak to you in the next one. Thank you.